was Jesus. What color? Black. Black? Yeah, what color was he? Caucasian. Caucasian. Black. Caucasian. Black. Jesus was a human. If you're a Christian, you believe that he was the second son of the Blessed Trinity. He was uh, the son of God. He was divine, but he was expressed as, in his 33 years on earth as a human being. And now coming forward are not a few very, very active people to say that the presentation of a white Jesus down through history before people of color has served to characterize the Caucasian as superior, right. as the best, right. as better than others. Right. And more than that, has perpetuated a lie on the people of color and continued their enslavement. That's right. Here's who's here. Blair Underwood joins us yeah. from L.A. Law. Blair, Blair needs no lecture on this. A lot of black folks don't go for this black Jesus at all. Been praying to a white Jesus all their lives. Mm -hmm. This is their Jesus. And no activist of the moment is going to come along and rip that imagery out of their soul. Mm -hmm. And they're just as proud of their blackness as anybody else. It doesn't have to do with all this psychological stuff that you newfangle people keep bringing on. <laughs> Blair uh, Underwood has produced a, uh, it's, it, you know, it's mis misleading to call it a movie. It's a 30-minute uh, short, short film. Yeah, a 30-minute film in which he plays Jesus, titled The Second Coming, which was written, produced, and as you see, uh, starred in by uh, Blair Underwood. Um, you should also know, without giving the story of this film away, that the historical Jesus then uh, appears in your film as a contemporary black male. Right. Who is in a mental institution and they're scared to death of this guy. And I mean, almost to the point where, you know, they're just be beating him down. Mm -hmm. Did the Rodney King thing inspire you? Oh, most definitely. Uh, I have talked, I've been very outspoken about things that I have dealt with with the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, friends of mine, uh, young African-American males with the so-called justice system. And when the Rodney King, the first verdict, came out a year ago, it hit me. Said, I said, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a so-called celebrity. It doesn't matter if you're Rodney King. Even Christ, if he were a man of color, were to come back, he would be treated the same way. So in the film, that's why he's accused of this, this heinous crime without giving too much of it away. But I, I, I need to make the point before Please we get do. into this, because this Go. can get very heated as it has before. Well, I don't know. We got a pretty, <laughs> well, yeah, a pretty thoughtful audience here. You know, uh, they it, will offer their own insightful, civilly oh, course, uh, structured commentary here in just a moment. <laughs> but it's important for people to realize that this film is not about dividing people. You've seen, this audience has seen the film. It's about understanding. It's about enlightenment. It's about what this man, Jesus, whatever he looked like, yeah. what he taught, his philosophy yeah. of love. But we're dealing with this historical figure. Yes, we are. Uh, what color was he, Blair, in your own... Are you, you are a Christian? Yes, I am. You were raised a Christian. Yes. And, uh, you, you know, this is not an investigation, but, I mean, was it, you better get to church or mama's going to have to know why? I don't know. I, it was pretty much like that, yeah. Um, all right, so that you... Uh, uh, was it Baptist? Baptist. All right, so you sang all those hymns to Jesus, and I'm sure that Jesus, in, throughout your childhood, was white. Is that so? Uh, that's, that's correct, but we were always told that he was a man of color. Before we get into it, you have to understand what is black. What is blackness? Blackness is one of three things. It's either a perception, what you see. When you look at me, Phil, you see a man of a darker hue. It's either a state of mind, a consciousness. That's why I have friends of mine who are white, and, you'll say, and, and, and they know more about African-American heritage and culture than some black people. And you'll say, well, this, this white guy, he's black. He's a brother. Thirdly, when we talk about blackness, it's defined by your ancestral lineage, your gene genealogical line. If you go to the genealogical line of Jesus, there are people of color throughout his lineage completely. And it, it, the thing is, before anybody can take issue with this film or with this entire issue, and it's not a novel idea, the significance of this film is it's never been on camera. A black Jesus has never been on camera. Right. Certainly not a crucifixion. Um, so it, it's been there. And, it, and it's important to establish yeah. that because of all the things you said, we talked about right. the justice system. Well, but, but once we get beyond that, then, and only then, it becomes relevant. Yeah, what let me just, like. I want to make sure I understand your position here, Blair. 
um, you do seem to be finessing a bit. Uh, the color is a matter of the heart. And mm. you're right, there are bl white people who have been so very, very uh, exemplary in their continued effort to ensure that the civil rights of all people are, are protected, mm -hmm. that, that people of color, minorities, have started to refer to them as brother or sister. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Mm -hmm. um, but they're still white. I, I think you are, you are suggesting that there's some pretty good historical, anthropological evidence suggesting that Jesus just probably was black. Am I correctly stating your... Uh, Right. That's right. Yeah, okay. In that, was he a Jewish black guy? Do, and, and do, oh, there's no question. We're talking about was. a Jewish man from Jerusalem who more than likely, there were no camcorders or Polaroid cameras then, but more than likely had to have been a man of color. We're are talking you, about probabilities. Are you there, caller? Uh, yes, Phil. Uh, I just want to say that when God said he was going to make man in his image, he did not mean white, green, or any color. It was supposed to be spiritually like him. Very good. And that's what is important. Well, yes, well... Thank Wait a minute. Oh. Hold Thank it. You, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that's, that's, I tell you, caller, I, I very much appreciate your thoughtful comment, except you are kissing a baby here. Uh, and you're waving a flag. These politically active people who want to, uh, as you'll see in a moment, there are people who are taking down the white Jesus because that is, he was, he was, he has been presented for 2,000 years before peoples of all color as a, Corca a Caucasian oh European... I got through. Europe... Oh, we got... You got two lines coming in on one. That's a pretty good sign, Blair. You've kind of rung the bell here. <laughs> with the phone so please don't miss the point. It's not enough to say, hey, we're all God's children. If you continue to present Jesus this way before little African-American children what? or people of color all over the world, they grow up somehow believing that way down inside, white is better. Plus the fact that we're talking about the historical figure. We are created in God's image, in God's image, but this man, Jesus, the actual yeah. human being we're speaking of. Are you there, caller? Is yes, I am. You wanted to say. Yeah, I wanted to say, I'm a 32-year-old white female who was raised Catholic, and I, I just have to say that no matter if Jesus is black, white, green, red, I believe in the supreme being, and yeah. I think that's what we all have Very to good. look may at. I ask the, and may I ask the Catholic this question? Yes. How, would it be okay? With, uh, do you, I assume you're a churchgoer. Well, no, not as much as I was. Well, but I you've was... been, all right, well, that's not just, uh, would, you, uh, would, you, would you approve of your uh, pastor changing the color of Jesus' statues to black in your church? If that was what my church did, that, as I view... I don't look at a picture of Jesus and say, oh, that's Jesus. I have a feeling within me right. that there's a supreme well, being. But what and it color has Jesus what, what color, color has Jesus been throughout your childhood? White. And what I color, think that's ridiculous because, What color was his mother? You know, who knows? And I don't think anyone I don't think any those people that are on your show that there are were, I must tell you this. I'm older than you are, but uh, there were no black statues in my childhood. Well, right. There, were, I mean everybody, St. Teresa, Joseph, everybody, everybody. I had a guardian angel was white. Right, they were all white, and I'm just saying, but just because that's how we were raised doesn't mean, doesn't mean that we have to be so narrow-minded and so focused Blair agrees, on I'm sure. We yeah, can't but... open up our minds and our hearts to something different. She's missing the point. It, it is twofold. You have to answer this question twofold. It's important because when you speak of this man, when all the evidence points to that, it's an affirmation of people of color. I'm speaking of Latino, Asian, African Americans, Na Native Americans, mm -hmm. people of color. It's an affirmation of our place in history that we contributed. Right. I'm telling you, people wonder why there are riots and why there are bl uh, blacks and Latinos in jail so much. There's no self-image. Right. When, you, when, you, when you deal with revisionist history that's been revised and altered as it has, it deals with your self-image. You don't care about life anymore. The Reverend uh, George Stallings now uh, referred to as bishop, former Catholic priest, since has split himself from mainstream Catholicism, has his own church, Washington, D.C. He preaches a sermon. Here he is, Good Friday of this year, the Reverend Stallings from Washington. We must make one thing clear on this Good Friday, that the Jesus of history that you saw walking up the street just a few minutes ago is only an imposter. The white 
like Christ is only a figment of Michelangelo's imagination. The white Christ is an imposter of white Christianity. Now, what I'm seeing is we're starting to divide. It's not about dividing people. It's about speaking about the truth. And then, that's the second fold of the question, you have to deal with this man. This man was about love. This man was about embracing everybody. This man was about forgiveness. This man was about enlightenment. This man was about tolerance. And that's what this film that we did, The Second Coming, is about. Tolerance for each other and tolerance for each other's religious beliefs. I have to say, and I have to make this point, with all respect to Archbishop Stallings, I don't agree with tearing down other images. You can't, you can't force people to believe like you believe. I believe in speaking about the truth. Uh, speaking of tearing down, here, here is, uh, here is uh, the Reverend Stallings. I'll tell you what, uh, whether you're on Saturday Night Live or standing in the public square in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, seems everybody's putting the match to something today. Um, so, uh, so this is not going to be uh, met with the approval of everybody. Uh, some people communicate differently than others. And That's if I'm understanding, Mr. Underwood, you are, among other things, saying that uh, you believe it can be uh, established very credibly that Jesus was a man of color and that, uh, you, uh, if I'm understanding you, you have a certain empathy for those, especially those older Christians of all colors who have spent a lifetime worshiping a white Jesus. You're not going to go in there and break anybody's statue, but you are stepping forward to say... I'm stepping forward 2,000 years later. You have to understand the initial images of Christ and the Madonna Right. And countries like Poland, Spain, Italy, these are white Caucasian countries, right. worship a black, a black Madonna, Madonna and a black yes. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. These images were altered and changed. <laughs> Are, are you there, caller? Hi. Hi, Donahue. Hi. I'm calling from uh, Pennsylvania, and I'm a white female, and I don't see where there's any difference in whether or not Jesus is black, just like the first caller. Uh, first, I'd like to commend Blair Underwood for the relevance of what this is bringing out to the surface. Um, uh, in these day and ages, people need to get beyond the color factor. Yes. Uh, who we pray to does not matter. Uh, we were created in his image. Uh, if I go to heaven, I might see him as white. Uh, if someone else goes to heaven, they might see him as, as black. Who do we know what we're going to perceive him as? Well, except that we are left to uh, at least leave the door open for at least an inquiry, as Mr. Underwood has already offered us with his film titled uh, The Second Coming. I agree. Uh, if, if we accept the humanity of Jesus, that Jesus, was, that Jesus was a human being who happened to be divine, and that is traditional Christian doctrine, then we have to deal with his ethnicity. And that's what uh, Blair is doing. I'm glad you called, Pennsylvania. Are you there? You had a brief comment. Go ahead. Yes. I would like to say that, number one, yes, Jesus Christ was a black man. Jesus Christ was from the Mediterranean region. And if you were to read in your Bible, it will tell you that he had matted hair and webbed feet. White people always said that Christ, uh, black people had webbed feet. But that's not the issue here. The issue is, look to the true fact. Right. Over in the Mediterranean, people were of dark skin. You know this Revelations quote? Revelations 1 that? verse 15. Yeah. You know yeah. this? You want to talk about it? Here uh, we go. As you know, the Bible is, of course, I mean, brilliant uh, biblical scholar, but uh, uh, here's from Revelation. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, 
and his feet like unto fire, fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So the, right. it's the brass metaphor that you that you think lends support to, to his being a person. That is what you usually hear, the brass metaphor and also about the hair, but more specifically, like I said before, because that can be talked away and rationalized away into symbolism. Yes, it can. I'm talking about the ancestral lineage of this man. And in and, and fact, as scientists have told us, we all come and the first man and woman were black, so really we all have yes. <laughs> blackness in us. Are, are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Hi, Blair. Hi. Hi. Hi, Jill. Hi. Um, I am a white Christian woman, and I believe, um, I agree with um, Blair that... You're five for five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I agree. I, I believe just because of geographically where Jesus was born, that he was of color. I don't know particularly what shade, but I know he was of color. And I also think that, you know, when it comes down to it, everyone who's a Christian believes in Jesus' blood, and that's what matters, the color of his blood. I do thank you for your call. Uh, I assume uh, Blair is uh, encouraged by the support you're receiving. You come out here waiting to uh, hear some self-righteous white Christians stand up and say, who do you think you are messing with my Jesus? Well, that is part of it. We, we have gotten that, and we will get more of that. But these are people who have missed the point. Uh, the spiritual significance of Jesus Christ is that uh, African Americans have suffered from institutional racism, which uh, diminishes their spiritual and cultural self-esteem because of the color of of Christ, these, and that should not go unnoticed. Commend you, brother. Bless these you. These young Thank people you. have been asked to be with us. Some not so young people. <laughs> you just might be older than the host here. Um, well, then I should be deferential to you and to your age, sir, and I will. These are uh, people who are church active, and I think most are Christians, and want you to know that I think you all uh, are very supportive of Blair's effort to share with uh, the nation and the world uh, the idea that Jesus was a man of color. Kane Hope Felder, Ph.D., joins us. You're a professor at Howard University School of Divinity. Uh, and you wanted to say what about this issue? I wanted to say, first of all, it's important to recognize that the Bible is, uh, represents a world before color prejudice. The Bible represents a world that has a very favorable attitude towards blacks. It's a multicultural world. Yes, it is. One of the great tragedies has been that in the last 400 years, Europeans and white Americans have created the whole ideology of white supremacy and they have in the process taken the images, sacred images as well as secular images of, that are victorious and positive and made those uh, images white uh, and, uh, and by the same token they have recast black into a negative image. And I think that is a very important thing to keep in mind here. We are interested in corrective historiography, setting the record straight right. so that our people, African American people, will begin to sense, as I think was pointed out in a very wonderful yes. way earlier, yes. uh, have much uh, in history yes. that has been neglected. It is not a reach to suggest that the slave who worshipped on Sunday, the Messiah who was Jesus, who was white in all his uh, temporal uh, manifestations as offered to us by Michelangelo and other of the classical artists over the centuries yes. would be likely to bring the same kind of uh, obsequious deference to the slave master who was white as well so I think you are here to say among other things that inside there's nothing overt about this and it's an it's insidious but it's there is the notion that somehow white people are to be obeyed respected and looked up to by the slave. Particularly when the white slave master has a whip and a gun to the slave's head. Particularly when uh, this, this image uh, is presented in such a way that the black has no option. He, the black cannot believe anything else. It cannot even suspect, cannot even express right. uh, 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 anything but the quiet inner pain of seeing the inconsistency between the whole teachings about a, a God of love and somehow the Bible is being used to keep them oppressed and feeling negative about themselves. And that is a tradition that we have received in America and the average white person needs to be instructed on these matters, not just young black kids. The average white person in America is as misinformed and, and miseducated as the average black person. And I think that this is a very substantial issue in all of the colleges and the universities of this country. Muhammad Ali called our attention a long time ago to the color of devil's food cake and angel food cake. Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Is the caller there? Probably a good idea if I push the button. <laughs> Hello? Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. You wanted to say. Yes. 
uh, if Jesus is supposed to be black all of a sudden, why wasn't he portrayed as black 2,000 years ago? Why did they start him out as white and all of a sudden he's black? Uh, you got a lot of white reporters intervening. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a, a, you know, I mean, I think these folks are suggesting that the image of Jesus was co-opted by the white establishment over the years. All the, all the artists were white. They were all liars then. They were, well, liars, I mean. Right, then they well, all lied. Because say, over if he one, was over, black, to, to the black. Caller, I yeah. want to say this to the caller. Over 100 references to, to Egypt are in the Bible. Over, over 50 references to biblical Ethiopia, which is present-day Sudan, are in the Bible. Old Testament and New Testament. Bible scholars, most of whom have been white, have translated and interpreted the Bible in a way that would be distinctly favorable to Europe and a way that would be distinctly unfavorable yeah. to Africans and people of color. Yeah. And this is an issue that we really have been suffering under for a long time. And we'll be okay, back. If I got a break, call. I'm truly <laughs> sorry. Give us a one-liner and I got to get out of here. I, in that case, we can't believe the Bible either. If you're right, she's right. Well, now, just be careful here. Thanks for waiting, caller. You wanted to say briefly. Yes, sir. I'm a black female, and I'm married to a white male. And my in-laws are so prejudiced against me. Now, I just wonder what's going to happen to all these people that are so prejudiced and so hateful towards black folks when they do see a black Jesus, if it is a black Jesus, and what's well, going to happen to the most of the media that has just yeah. been terrible to black media? What are they going to say then? Yeah. Uh, it, well, first of all... Uh, there's not going to be one decision about what color Jesus may be in your church. This would obviously be something that uh, the church itself... Uh, incidentally, many churches have already made this uh, yeah. step forward. That's right. Not a few are uh, predominantly black churches in urban areas. Um, hang on a minute, caller, uh, because next to uh, Dr. Felder is uh, Corrine Stewart. You're a real live 15-year-old uh, teenager. Well, we should know how you feel. Uh, Mr. Stewart, sir. Uh, what are your thoughts about this issue? Well, I just think that throughout history, our history has been denied. If you look at, we don't, we don't have to just look at Jesus. We could go back to Cleopatra when, when they was played Cleopatra. We didn't see that on television. We saw a white woman as Cleopatra. We saw Moses on television portrayed as a white man. Yeah. Yeah. But this is not something new. This is not something that just jumped out the cracks all of a sudden. This, we have been yeah. discussing this for a while. What inspires you, Corrine? You're very, obviously, you've done your own scholarship on this. At age 15, you were raised in a Christian church, huh? Yes. Did you sing in the choir? I mean, were you there every Sunday? Now, don't yes, lie to I, us. I <laughs> sang Kareen. in the choir. My mother, my mother had me to come. I bet she did. <laughs> yeah. Well, are, are you still singing in the choir, Corrine? This is none of our business, uh, so you want to take the fifth. Go uh, ahead. I can't. I can't. i tell you, I don't sing in the choir because I can't sing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> another, another stereotype down yes, the drain. Is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Very good point. And you're probably uh, not too good with a three-point shot, uh, three point basketball shot either. So let's put down a lot of these uh, stereotypes while we're at it. You're, you're, um, you, uh, you're inspired to look into this how, uh, Kareem? Well, like most children and stuff, I really didn't pay any attention to it. When we walked through the church, Jesus was white, Mary was white. Heck, every picture on the wall was white. But then one day I just took a step back and looked and thought about why is this? Why do we have these images? Where are we? We didn't, we're not just slaves. We are more than ex-slaves. We're from Africa. We have a very rich heritage. We were the first architects. We built pyramids. We were the first astrologers. So I just, take a, I just took a step back and said, heck, we're not this. We're more than gang members. We're more than killers, basketball players, musicians, entertainers. Yeah. And I think it's the, it's the time. It's the time. It was time 25 years ago when Martin Luther King was assassinated, when Malcolm X was assassinated. I want somebody else to step up to the front plate. It's not, we just shouldn't sit here and just say, oh, well, heck. They let us go to a bathroom. Call her you at a brief comment. Um, yes, I'm an uh, African-American female who's about to become a mother. And my comment is um, in reference to the depiction of yeah. biblical characters throughout the year. If it wasn't such a big issue, then they would also involve people of color throughout the year. Right. I mean, what am I supposed to tell my child when it's born when it says, Mommy, 
Why isn't there people my color up there? Yes. You're thinking, Mom. Your wheels are turning. Uh, Santa because I Claus. I grew up in a household where there was a white Jesus or Caucasian person depicted. Yes. Yeah. And you, you never saw anyone of color. It's right. like we didn't exist. Hang on a minute. Reach, reach. Jesus' role was a man of love. What I'm seeing and hearing is nothing but sacrilegious. You, in other words, Jesus is what color? Jesus' role uh, was, a, was a man who taught love. What color? Color was? has nothing to do yes. with it. All right, so. In reality, yes. Jesus was bronze. What do you got? Okay? Excuse but what I'm seeing and hearing right. is nothing but sacrilegious. Destroying of the pictures. You're it's horrible. Right. It's You're the right. hearing this destroying the pictures here. Yeah. Um, if, you, if, if you look in the Bible, it tells you that the first man, Adam, was formed from the dust. Dust is not white. And the Bible says that Jesus is the second man, Adam. All right, so how excuse me. All right now, we're going to have a lot of biblical stuff from you no, no, no. because I want you to know something. I don't want to get any arguments with you. Uh, you wanted to say briefly what, sir? I want to ask a question, and that is why it is uh, uh, everybody's up in arms about the truth. The truth of the matter that Jesus was not a European Caucasian person. He was a person of color. Now, the white people have determined what color is. If you're not white, then you're Very black. Good. So Very that means that you Jesus know. Christ Felder, was, of oh, course, Dr. Felder is the leading scholar in this field. Wendy Reitmeyer is here. You get to talk today, Wendy. <laughs> you say, among other things, that it shouldn't matter. That's the first That's thing right. I think you want to know. That's what right. else would you like to share with this audience? May we assume you are a good Christian person? Yes. Doesn't yes. have your age here, so I don't know if I'm alive. Uh, you're 28. 28. Uh -huh. Kindly tell us what you think. Um, I really don't think it should matter. I think that if you really believe that it changes how you feel about him, then maybe you should reevaluate your relationship with him. You know, it's either, it doesn't matter if he's black or white because it's stated again and again and again in the Bible that he, he walked through all the nations. It didn't matter who they were. He loved them regardless. Would it upset you if, 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 his, uh, if he's per portrayed as black? No. Wouldn't? No. So uh, if that would be the choice of certain congregations and within the Christian tradition, that's okay with you. Sure. Uh, well, guess who else is here? <clears throat> My good man, you get the award for humility. You've said nothing here. You've been very, very... Uh, we can only assume that you're ready to say something, however. You are the Reverend Dr. F. Brennan Jackson. You are pastor of the Calvary Institutional Missionary Baptist Church in Gary, Indiana. Right. Proud tradition. Here's a church that wasn't formed yesterday. Uh, you've been around a, a while. You then have, I assume, worshiping in your church, people of all ages, but you also have, I would think, a considerable number of seniors who work, who wor worship in your church who happen to be African American. How am I doing? Right. So you have to be sensitive to their feelings. Right. And you can't come up in the 11th hour of their life and start tearing down pictures. Do I understand some of you, w the challenges you face with this, or would you want to, or tell us how you feel. I don't face a challenge, or we don't face the challenge. I, I, I've never been under the assumption that God is a man as such. We preach God as a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Right. He's a God of all mankind, not a certain group of people. Right. Right. And I, well, I bet he's white on the statues of your church. No. I bet he's white in the pictures of no, your church. No, the, the, the picture in the pool depicts him as black. But everybody knows that's not Jesus. That's just a picture. Okay. Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. So, the, so that there now, is a... one other thing. Yeah. Jesus said in the book of John, other sheep have I that's not of this fold. If a brother just wants to think that Jesus is of color, it's all right. But I haven't heard nothing said here today about salvation. It's all been about color, and that is sacrilegious. Well, that is unfair. That is unfair. You think that's yeah. Mr. Donnelly. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. You have any idea? Yeah, I got an hour show and you come here with 12 books now. What? Right. So we got to get, we got to do the work of Caesar here no, now. So don't take it. me around the world. No, no. Here, what you here, to say. here, here, man. I can't right. show you. Right, well, just make your I want to challenge them, all of them on your show. What color was Jesus? Jesus was black. If he lived, he didn't exist. Here is the Pope of Rome praying in his private chapel that's to the, the Black, Black Madonna. The Black Madonna. That's Bert, the private chapel in the Vatican is, for anyone. Very well woven into the Polish uh, tradition. Yeah. Our Pope is a Pole. Yeah. And we should not be surprised that the Black Madonna yeah. has been worshipped by our Pope. Oh, yeah. All right. Hey. I got to. Hang on just a minute, Ooh. boy. I'll tell you, you make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. I don't want you mad at me. Um, 
Let's take another look at Blair's film here. Now, Jesus, as you saw, it opens with the crucifixion, three crosses, uh, and, and Blair it plays the role of the Christ. And now he, here he is expressing himself in contemporary times. They got this guy locked up real good, scared to death. I mean, we got chains and doors and locks and a lot of frightened white people locking up this man who, in this, as you would accept it in the, in the manner in which Blair has written this, would be a, a, a suggestion of the second coming. And he's got some of the brothers shook. Watch this. Blackness is far more than perception, Andre. Blackness is also that which is inherited through ancestral lineage. It's irrelevant whether my skin color is light or dark. I am black because black ancestral blood flows through my veins. If the roots of the tree are black, then the fruit must be black. Just as you know him to be. You must understand, my friend, that my father created me from all people. For all people. But you see, I am what I am. All right, Blair. What would you want to add to that, sir? I'd like to say it's important to note that in the film, he's not imprisoned only by white people. In the film, it, it goes both ways. You got good and bad on both sides. And that actor, by the way, is Ren Brown in that scene. Yes. Well done, brother Dan. Take your back. Yeah. But I think what I was saying before uh, manifests itself in that scene. It's important to say this man was a man of color. It's important. And we're talking about, and I agree with you, sir, God is a spirit. But we are talking about this human being that walked the earth. And for you, sir, here, right here, Christianity, if you want to remove that aside, that's fine. This film is from a Christian standpoint. I'm not getting into your beliefs if you don't believe in Christ or, no, the, uh, the gentleman here. And well, he, had, he had to be let the reverend, Let the reverend make his point, sir. He had an earthly mother and a heavenly father. Yes, sir. God, the Catholic Church, called in 325, called the first church council. And they sit there and debate it for 320 some years who Jesus is. And they finally came out saying he's part human and divine. Now, it's not the human expression of Jesus. So it's fully human and fully divine. Yes. If he was a human, he had to have There's a big difference in part and fully. He was, yes. He was divine who for 33 years expressed himself. In a human form. And in human form. Yeah, you know, you got, you got me those, to contend with here, too. All those things <laughs> that we saw. Yeah, what we see. Yes. Was given to us that we would be able to withstand these kind of things. And as far as the church being in trouble over what's being exposed here now, the church right. has always been in trouble. The church was born in trouble. Yes. So this will not make a difference. And if these brothers want to believe, and brothers want to believe, if this will help brothers to believe Jesus is of color, That's right okay on. with you. Right. Right. Kareen, you wanted to say it. I have to break here, this, sir. This is very nice to know. If he says he's a human being. If he's a human being, he has to have a color. Have any of you seen a human being walk around with green, purple, uh, blue, no, orange, no. yellow? Uh, but it also had a says color. in the Bible it, that, he, that he is all and he is in all, regardless. With anybody saying that Jesus, uh, the color of Jesus do not matter, especially when you're looking at a people that has been demoralized, degraded uh, uh, by using the Jesus concept as white. Very and, good. and that's something we have to really look at. I, I think so, too. Yes, ma'am, you wanted to say <laughs> I just want to take You'll issue. take the mic, please? Yes. Take issue, please. I just want to find out, why is it that we have a problem with Jesus being black? Why is there a problem, I mean, why is it okay for him to be white? All these years he has been... Why isn't it okay for him to be white if why, he is? Because we have, grow, because we have learned from we were born that the, the image of this man has been white. 
Why can't we put a black image in there now? Did you want it's to awful. Give the mic to You'll stand, please? No, no the, the only thing that, that I think that needs to be brought out here is that the issues are being confused. There's a spiritual aspect of Jesus. We all love him. He's in our hearts. He's in our soul. He lives. Okay, but there's a human aspect, and I think that that's what has to be addressed. You're mixing the issues, and that's why you, you said that everything was sacrilegious, this, that, and the other thing. I understand your point, but the issue is, is human, not spiritual. No, it's not. Yes. Uh, uh, it's easy for anybody to say this. hasn't had a chance. Please, oh, come on. Yeah, give give me a young superstar. man right there. They had a black right. Judas. Yeah. Nobody uh, said yeah, anything. Yes, we did. Yes, sir. You wanted to say. Yes. Uh, I basically am not concerned about how white folks f um, view Jesus Christ. My concern is about black people. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why I say this is because uh, if, you, if you examine uh, all civilizations, they had an image. The gods were in their image. Right? Yes, and we have to understand that we as black people are a dominated people. And as a result of that, our oppressors are going to, are going to put their gods and their beliefs on us. Yes. Right? And as, and as a result of that, 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 that's, that, that is the reason why you find that our kids, our young children growing up, cannot project themselves or see themselves into any, uh, anything substantial you, in life. Right. Your point is made. All right? I thank you. Kareen Stewart is, are you, are you Kareen's mother? Yes. You are. Well, you raised this young man to do a lot of thinking by the time he was 15 years old. His own uh, presentation here about the importance of the ethnicity of Jesus is very, very uh, compelling and shows a lot of hard work on his part. Uh, did, and you wanted to say. I just wanted to say, when Kareen and I pray, we don't pray because Jesus is black or white. What Kareen is trying to portray to you is that as a human being, the way he's depicted it has an effect on our black people. As young people, when they look up, they want to see someone that they can say that, that did yes. something in their life. That's true. And Kareen looked, he said, well, Mom, why do we have white Jesus? Is, was Jesus white? I said, no, he wasn't white. But the Bible depicts him as a man of color. I said, but from the European aspect, this is the way they portrayed him because how would it look for enslaved days to have a white or a black Jesus as a uh, savior? Yeah, yes. Are you there, caller? Pretty good to me. Yeah. yeah. Are you there, caller? Yes, I am. You wanted to say. I wanted to say I don't think it makes any difference, white or black. If Jesus, in effect, was black, well, then should the white children not have somebody to look up to as they're claiming that the black be children do? What is the difference? You ought to have something to look up for years and years yes. and years. Um, this young woman wanted to say. I don't know what color Jesus was. Um, I was, but I'm moved by Blair Underwood's film and um, impressed with it. And Kareen, I hope to raise my child as Kareen Mom has raised Kareen just to think about how we are in society and what color. I don't know if it matters. I don't know if Jesus was white or black, but it's okay. And I'm And we'll be back in just a moment. Here is a, here is a look at uh, the Bible, its scholarship, its history. Oh. I tell you, they never call you chicken. Wait into this. Wendy, briefly, there's, you wanted to there's say. There's one thing that I don't want to happen from all this, because this issue is going to keep getting hotter and hotter yep. and hotter. I don't want to see young kids fighting because Jesus was black or white. Right, I want to see them all come Kareem. forward and say he, was, he loved us Very all. Very good point. Kareem, you wanted to us, say. Hold on a moment. Us, us as black people, we need to stop pointing the finger at white people. We need to look at ourselves and see why we collect this. We let everybody else, Jews, Koreans, come into our community, control our economics of our community, right. and we can't even open a store in our own That's community. Right. But we always want to point the finger, take Are a look there, at ourselves. Are you you wanted to say briefly? Yeah, hi. I'm very annoyed over, not the, not the uh, point that Jesus would be white or black, but it's just another issue, again, thrown into the media. I'm the mother of a four-year-old child, and... While shopping one day, he asked, Mommy, is that man black? And I said, Yes, he is. And the man practically attacked me and said, That's, that's what's wrong with this white world. No, it, no the gentleman and was wrong. You are quite correct in answering truthfully your, your son's question. And we trust that you put a positive spin as well on the answer. But wouldn't a black Jesus, to be at least occasionally exposed to your young child, help him with his curiosity? Oh, sure. He's been black Santa Claus and Very I live good. in a white oh, area yeah. and yeah. that didn't I mean he was right. more excited about and, 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 and I want to point out a good yes. geography Dr. A, a, Dr. A, Felder commented yeah a, a good geography lesson for us all you take uh, some people you put send one of them to the, tell them to walk to Berlin see how long it takes them tell them to, uh, uh, from Jerusalem to Berlin and then tell them to walk from Jerusalem to 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 Britain 
tell them to walk to, to uh, Germany, and at the same time, tell another person to walk to Africa. That person walking to Africa from Jerusalem will get there uh, many, many days ahead of the others. We fail to realize exactly that, that Palestine is exactly where it's always been, and it's a, a tragedy that America and our, our higher education system continuously uses the politics of race to present distorted information, which is worked against Online. black people and for white people. Okay. That's what I, needs I to be looked at carefully. I think uh, Ju Pope Julius uh, II, back in 1509, had the same agenda that perhaps some of the uh, Catholic uh, ministers uh, had when I was growing up. Stony the Road We Trot is another work by Dr. Uh, Felder. I'm pleased to call your attention once again to uh, Blair Underwood's work titled The Second Coming. More immediately, you should know that tonight, if you're watching us on Monday, tonight, Blair stars with... Lou Gossett. Uh, Lou Gossett. In, uh, they're both in prison. And they look up to discover that Lou's his father, and yes, Blair's his son. This is tonight on NBC, uh, and we will be watching it. Yes. I'm really sad that this is an issue now because I have two grandchildren. And you think there's enough division? So yeah. No, I mean it's what's in your heart, you know. Yes, you wanted to say briefly. Okay, this issue is complex enough. Right. In if God is the end-all and be-all, the right. salvation, yes. what difference is his color? 